Okay, so first of all, everybody, uh, I appreciate your uh, understanding with our with our uh, and forgiveness with our technical difficulties here. We will uh, we will get this all sorted out. Um, this is Peter Hood. I am the chairman of the select board, and I'm calling the meeting to order at eight minutes after five. Um, we have the entire select board. We have uh, could our could our guests all identify themselves just for Steve, who just came on, please. Nils Bain from Aegis Renewable Energy. Thanks, Mel. Eric Banner from Aegis Renewable Energy. Okay. Um, Brad Hash from Aegis. Okay. Cindy and Hill. I'm um, the. Uh, Cindy Hill, I'm the attorney for Jim Gallagher, who's an adjoining neighbor to the project. Vic Dwyer. And we have Vic, Vic Dwyer, you're still on? Yes, I am. And Sandy Levine. Sandy Levine, resident of Middlesex. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, do we have any, heaven forbid, amendments to the agenda, Sarah? We do not. Excuse me? No. No. Okay. Thank you. So item number one on the agenda, and we're almost on time, we caught up, is considering Aegis request for a letter of support from the Select Board for the Vermont Public Service Utilities Commission designating the location of solar electric generating facility array at 58 Center Road abutting Kingsbury Construction, saying that it is a preferred site. The Planning Commission will consider the request at its April 15th meeting. Um, I have just just right off the bat, I have a little bit of a concern about this, and I'm willing to listen to everybody, especially you, Sandy. But my preference on this, my strong preference would have been for the Planning Commission to uh, take this up, review it, and make a recommendation to the select board. Now we're sort of doing it backwards and putting the, the cart before the horse, I think. Why do you think we're doing that, Peter? I mean, we could pass it over and have them consider it and then bring it back. Well, we could do that. But what we're being asked to do, Mary, is we're being asked to approve this letter tonight, and then the Planning Commission is going to take it up at its meeting on April 15th. Yeah, oh. but, but so if we decide we want to wait and get their recommendation, what's the problem with that? There's no problem I mean, with it, but that isn't what we're asked. To, we're being asked to do. So, but we I can say, say no. Mary, just 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 listen to me for a minute. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm bringing up before we even get into this. Is do we want to consider this tonight, or do we want to wait and hear what the planning commission has to say, or do we want to? Listen, we've got the Aegis folks on the line. This is our chance to, or one chance to talk to them. Do we want to talk to them, have the Planning Commission consider it, and then us consider it at our next meeting? How would you like to proceed? Select board. Uh, this is Steve here. As far as I'm concerned, seeing how they're on the line, I just soon listen to what they have to say. Liz, agree. Okay. Great. I I'm think sorry? we should send it to I think we should send it to that to the planning commission first and then we should see what they have to say and then have it come here. Okay. Phil? So? Um yeah, I agree with, with Mary. I would prefer to see it go to the planning commission first and then uh come back to us with uh, their recommendation. Liz? I said that we should listen to them because they're all here on the phone. Okay, so um, I know it's a little unusual, and I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world, but I agree since since they're all here, uh, and I believe we have the time, uh, let's listen to them, but let's not let's not move forward. Let's wait for the planning commission meeting, and then we will take this up again at our at our next meeting. So, so with that, um, Aegis people, we're we're ready to hear from you. Thank you, Steve, and thank you uh, to the select board. Um, we are we're perfectly fine with the, the course of action that you just. 
Oh, I'm sorry. This yes, this is Nels from Aegis Renewable okay, Energy. That's fine. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we're we're perfectly fine with the course of action you just uh, laid out, um, but I, I I appreciate the opportunity to uh, present what we have today to you, and then it can go to the the planning commission and then back to the select board. We're perfectly fine with that. Um, uh, so the, the project uh, is uh, at 58 um, Century Road uh, in Middlesex. It would be a 150 kilowatt solar project um, located on a cleared lot uh, just behind uh, Kingsbury's uh, main offices um, between their main office and the 802 self-storage um, owned property, which is also vacant right now. Um, <clears throat> so the, the lot is owned by Stephen Van Niesen and uh, TJ Kingsbury would uh, be leasing the property from Stephen um, and put the, the solar array on that property. Um, before I go on, any questions so far? No. Okay. Um, so the, the project itself is roughly a one acre uh, size project. Um, this is uh, a 150 kilowatt project, so roughly um, uh, 550 uh, solar panels or so. Um, and uh, this, just to give you a sense of the scale of the project, this would be about the amount of power uh, that it will produce to, uh, to offset about 30 homes. Um, so certainly not a utility scale project by any means, uh, but, but a nice size project that has some economy of scale to make it so the, the economics on the project um, work well for the owner as well as for the, the uh, net metering off-taker participant. Um, so uh, the, the project is uh, in a very hidden spot. It can't be seen, um, it, it won't be seen from Center Road or any abutting uh, residences. Um, and uh, is fairly close to uh, TJ's property line uh, for Kingsbury construction, but he's um, perfectly fine uh, signing a, a, a waiver of setback if that's necessary. Um, but uh, that we can we can talk to you folks about that um, uh, next time around. It's uh, certainly not not a big deal. Um, so. Uh, we have sent out the 45-day notice, um, and so that, that clock has started to tick. We can't submit the Certificate of Public Good until the 45 days is up, um, or, or the, the uh, petition for the Certificate of Public Good to the Public Utility Commission. Um, what we're asking for today or, or over the next month or so um, is uh, for for the town to provide the project with a uh, what's called a municipal letter of support, um, and uh, just to give some context to that, uh, roughly two years ago, the Public Utility Commission and I'm, it might have been three years ago, Public Utility Commission um, uh, uh, made rule changes that uh, significantly restrict where. Um, solar projects can go. Um, part of part of it was in the interest of making sure that uh, projects aligned well with uh, town <clears throat> town plans and town rules. Um, so what they did was they created a number of uh, preferred site designations for uh, for uh, preferred locations um, and scenarios. For example. Rooftop projects are considered preferred sites, as are landfill projects or um, gravel pits and so on. Um, another one of these categories for preferred site status is a site where the project receives a letter of support from the two municipal bodies being the select board and the planning commission, as well as the regional planning commission. So. Um, that's what we're reaching out to you today about is uh, requesting a letter of support from the town. Um, 
we we wouldn't be asking for a letter of support if we felt this project was at all controversial. Um, but the fact that this project is uh, so well hidden um, and will have, in in our view, uh, zero impact on the abutting neighbors. Um, uh, because of that, we felt that this would be a, a great candidate to, to reach out to the municipality. Uh, we've received municipal letters of support from, from other towns uh, for identical, identically sized projects. Um, and uh, it is generally uh, a very appropriate and um, well thought out approach for, to make sure that the municipality has um, has eyes wide open in, in terms of the projects that are um, being located within the municipality um, and also an opportunity to weigh in on, on the project. Um, okay, Eric, thank you. Eric, Eric, do you have anything to add to what I've said so far? I don't, I think you've covered it pretty well. Um, and in terms of the process, I. I don't know. I, I can understand the select board just thinking the planning commission is more of a, I guess, a planning body. So I might want to look at it first, but there's no, there's nothing in the statute or anything like that that requires the planning commission to look at it first, but it's, you know, it's certainly fine to, to take it the way you folks are approaching it tonight. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. It's just, just our normal, our normal practice on something like this is to go with the planning commission first, but Thank you for your. I, I do have a, I do have a couple of questions. Is this a good time for questions? Sure. Go ahead. Sure. My name is. Can you just identify yourself? Because I don't know who's talking. Yeah, I'm Jim Gallagher, the budding landowner. Oh, Jim's here. Okay. Yeah, it took me quite a while to get to get there. I didn't have the right password. It was on the website instead of something. Yeah, we were all we were all struggling, Jim. Yeah, I am. Okay. My concerns are the lost wildlife habitat, uh, storm water, the runoff down over the bank, uh, ending in the brook, uh, before uh, running under Interstate 89 in the culvert. Uh, and I'd like to know, is this land actually owned by Steve Van Eason or is it owned by 802 Self Storage, which is Kingsbury, which I have issues with uh, on some overshadowing of some sewage right now. Uh, he's had a lot of erosion down over the bank when spill was pushed over into the wetlands. Uh, I'm a resident and a taxpayer of Middlesex. Uh, uh, all these new buildings are adding more runoff and erosion running underneath that interstate. And I, I think a year ago we had some heavy rain and the silt and the dirt washed right, right into that culvert under I-89. Uh, yeah, the, the property is owned by Stephen Can Manny. you just and identify yourself when you're speaking with your email? I, I'm Jim Nils. Gallagher. Yeah, Nils, no, Nils no, Bain. I'm asking from, the responder. Yeah, Nils, Nils Bain from Aegis Renewable Energy. Uh, yeah, the, the property is owned by Stephen Van Eason. Okay, I know the, the project before this, it was owned by 802 Storage. Yeah, I believe it's been sub it's been subdivided. I sorry to interrupt. Yep. This is Jim Gallagher, yep. Uh, okay. We we hear you, uh we hear you, Jim. Okay. Uh my my understanding is um from reading through the material that uh this is a pre existing clear seal. So you're basically gonna be driving seal uh I don't, know, I don't know what you call them, brackets, beams into the ground. You're not using concrete. Um, is there going to be separation between the solar panels, or is it going to be like a, like a gigantic roof where the water will just all sheet off into one, uh, one area? Yeah, a good, good question. This is Nils from Aegis. Um, yeah, so, so the, the project will be uh, um, in rows, so there'll be two panels uh, in portrait on top of each other, and then a full row of um, several panels all the way along. Uh, so you might have a row that would have, let's say, 60 panels or more um, along that row, but it's two panels high. And then there's yeah. a roughly 20-foot uh, 
15 to 20 foot gap between each row. Um, okay. Yeah, and then of course, uh, you know, we'll be very careful to uh, have a silt fence and um, take appropriate measures to to minimize any uh, you know runoff from the site. Okay. Thank you. What, um, this, Peter, this is um, Peter, Peter, I just where did you read that? I didn't see anything in the materials I looked at. I'm sorry, Mary. Where did you read that? It was in the, it was in some of the uh, some of the attachments. Yeah, I know. I there were a whole I, bunch I was of looking. attachments that Sarah sent us. Yeah, I I have them all, but I don't see where you have the information about what it looks like. That's what I was asking about. That's, that's well, it was in there. I read it last night, Mary. It was definitely in there. I'm not making it up. No, no, I know you're not. I just okay. I didn't have that. Okay. Th this is um, else from Aegis. That would be attachment B um, in the submittal, the 45-day notice or advance notice that we provided. Oh, this Thank is you. a document, the site plan um, that was prepared by Emancipation Energy LLC. No, no, that's that's what it, this is going to be called. That that's the the co that's uh, the company that will own the project, but um, the, we Aegis Renewable Energy provided that uh, conceptual site plan. So if I could just if I could just continue quickly here, I have a couple of other questions. Um, one is, and maybe this is a question for you, Sandy, and I don't know if you have you had a chance to review this at all. I'm sorry, this is Sandy Levine. Um, I have yeah. looked at it a little bit. The Planning Commission will be taking this up next week. I'm just curious to listen I know. in I understand. to this meeting. So you haven't, you haven't looked at whether this conforms with our town plan and our zoning? Not yes. specifically, no. Okay, but you will be. So, Peter, this is Cindy Hill. May I, is this a, may I make a comment at this time? Um, I'd like to hear Sandy's answer first, if that's okay. Okay, go ahead. So, Sandy, you will be looking at those issues, correct? We have the same request before us that you have before you. I understand. But as part of your, my question is, as part of your process, you would be looking at whether it conforms to the town plan and zoning, correct? Yeah, I, I, we we would look at it in light of the town plan and the town zoning. Yeah, that's my that's my question. Thank you. Um, which, of course, I have not but done. I, and I but presume... though energy projects aren't covered by zoning, they're exempt from zoning. They go to the Public Utility right. Commission. Oh, correct. Right. And, and, as, plan, far, and as far as the town plan, there's a, I, there's a little bit in the town plan on energy issues. We're in the process of evaluating an enhanced energy plan, and that has where um, that has not been completed. So there are currently no preferred sites and no enhanced energy plan that would identify preferred sites in the town. Okay. 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 Thank you. Someone else had a question or a comment. Yeah, this is Cindy Hill. So um, I'm a, a, the you. attorney for Jim Gallagher, and I sent yep. a letter to all of you just uh, moments ago to the Planning Commission and the Select Board. Um, and actually, I commented fairly extensively on your town plan yep. and zoning. And it is true that zoning does not explicitly apply. However, you are being asked to do something discretionary that your town has no obligation whatsoever to do. And the question is, you know, what do you look to? And one of the things you look to is both your town plan and your zoning. Is this consistent with development patterns? Is it something, you know, it, a, a preferred site is something that you're saying this is highly desirable. And so you should be able to point to something in your, you know, town plan or town zoning that shows that this is the kind of development that's right for this site. And and that is not okay. the case. Um, as I outlined in um, our letter, there are a number of concerns. Mr. Gallagher expressed uh, some of those concerns about um, water and wildlife. Your town plan talks about not deeming uh, solar projects preferred when they're in habitat blocks, as this one is when they're within 75 street of feet of a stream bank and it's not, it looks like it's pretty much right on that. It's a little hard to tell from that site plan. 
when there's you know issues like erosion. Um, so you do not, you know, you do. This is something discretionary that you're being asked to do, which um, the town should look at. You know, is this under our town plan and zoning ideal? Is this the kind of thing we really want in in a place that we really want to see it? Um, and our letter that we submitted. Um, outlines why it is not um, so would urge you to uh, not deem it a preferred site um, or at the very least um, and I'm glad to hear that you were going to defer it to the Planning Commission um, but the other suggestion that we would have a request that we would have is that you do not need to do that letter before it gets submitted to the PUC when it gets submitted to the PUC there will be substantially more detailed information, evidence, and testimony regarding things like the wetlands or the stream um, location, more detailed you know, site plant testimony um, on these issues. And there is, no, um, there is no harm to the town, there is no benefit gained to the town in issuing a preferred site designation now as opposed to waiting to actually see the detailed information and do your due diligence, look at other projects by this, um, you know, developer and determine if this is something that the town, you know, really wants to put its stamp of approval on. Okay, thank you. Um, other other I, questions, Black Board members? I have a question, Mary Skinner. Okay, Mary. Um, is, is this project, a, what, what is, well, is this a Washington Electric Co-op project or a green power project? What is it attached to? This is this is Nils from Aegis. Uh, it is a Washington Electric Co-op project. And, and is um, this the project? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, no. Go ahead. I, I want to answer your your full question first. Is this a project that's coordinated with providing energy to Harwood Union High School? Um, it will actually probably be providing uh, energy to the greenhouse that's on the other side of the Kingsbury uh, property. Oh, the so-called marijuana farm that people are talking that's, about? Right, exactly. But, and that, it's, that's to be determined, but uh, we believe that's the approach that's going to be taken. And, um, Actually, there is a preferred site uh, status called 50%. It's essentially if 50% of the power is taken by an adjoining landowner, then that would be automatically considered a preferred site. The complication here is that uh, uh, TJ Kingsbury's property is actually between the project site and the medical marijuana facility. So uh, unfortunately, even though it's only a couple hundred feet over to that facility, um, we can't uh, work through that preferred site um, category. So that's part of why we're reaching out. So to when the town. are you? When, I'm sorry, Neil. I interrupted you. So when uh, when are you going to confirm or have a contract for the power that you're going to produce? Um, that would be probably in the next uh, month or two, maybe. Um, you know. Part of it is that, uh, you know, typically no one wants to take the time to enter into a contract for a, a project that um, is conceptual. They, they would prefer to have um, a project that is, uh, you know, a for sure thing or, or at least um, fully close to through the process. Thank you. Are you still, uh, are you allowed to proceed with a uh, requesting a certificate of public good, even if you do not have um, the letters of support from the town and the regional planning commission? Uh, they will not issue a certificate of public good without that. Uh, actually, this is Eric. Um, that's, that's Mills, that isn't, that isn't true. You can get it. So, and this goes back to a point that Cindy made. So Cindy is basically saying, hey, look, town, um, this is a, a privilege you bestow on somebody. You don't have to do it. Make sure it's in your best interest. And oh, by the way, you can wait till much later when the full application goes forward, in, in, at which time there will be some more detail that you can look at. While that is true in theory, in principle, projects only move forward if they're economically viable. 
and getting preferred site status grants a different rate from the utility, which makes the project viable. So it's a, so it's a little bit of a chicken or egg situation. Um, while you can get a permit for a project that isn't a preferred site, the revenue you get from the project is much less and you wouldn't go forward with all the expense of permitting if you couldn't bank on the idea that you were going in as a preferred site. So that's sort of like the behind the scenes of what's going on there. So Eric, what, what is kind of the general range of uh, preferred site reimbursement versus non-preferred site reimbursement? The, the one the, viable sure, and yes, the other not. Yeah, the difference, um, and Mills, correct me if I'm wrong, on a, on a 150, if you are a preferred site, you get an extra uh, two, is it an extra two cents per kilowatt hour? And so yeah, how, does, uh, how does that come out in dollars? It's a, four, it's a four cent difference between the two, right? So for those yeah. of us who can't do the math, what does that mean yeah. in terms of um, the 150? I think the yeah, way so to look at it is, is, is in terms of percentage. Uh, so, for, so, so currently, if you were if you were to get a permit today on a project like this as a preferred site, a four cent difference would be you, you'd you'd be at a seventeen point four one seven cents per kilowatt hour as a preferred site, and um, Nils, you're saying it's a four cent delta. I don't, I don't have that in front of me. But yeah, so it would be thirteen point. Yeah, so just do uh, you know. Um, Four as a percent of 17 point, uh, I'll do it for you. Just give me a second. Eric, uh, what is your position at Aegis? I'm sorry, I didn't listen to, I didn't hear that when you mentioned it. Oh, my, my position is director of business development. So, so the preferred site status is, is um, and we will supplement this if we're, if we're speaking incorrectly on the phone, because I, I want to double check it. I don't, have, I don't have a grid in front of me. But it's about a 22.9% uh, difference in your revenue. So we're talking about $100,000? Um, a little bit less? No. no. Um, the, the array will produce. Mills, do you have on the top of your tongue what the array will produce? Um, it'll produce... Somewhere in the 220, I think it might actually be in the uh, in the uh, advanced notice. I can tell you that. But um, to, Mary, just just to give you a little bit of perspective, a typical rate of return on a project like this is in the nine percent range on the higher higher end. Um, so when you have a 22 percent reduction in your revenue. You are deeply underwater. I'm just asking that if you get, well, if you don't have preferred status, you're still a net metering customer. Is that correct? I mean, you're still entitled to a rate under the net metering 5.1 rule. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, Eric did correct me on that. I, I, effectively, what what I was what I was really saying, this is Nils. Um, I was really saying that the project for for any 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 owner of a project would it would be dead for them because the economics simply will not work without the preferred site um, incentive. Okay, Mary, we're going to have we're going to have further time to discuss this, and we're already uh, ten or fifteen minutes behind on our agenda. Okay. And I want to give other board members a chance to. Uh, to ask uh, to ask questions. Uh, anyone else have anything? Well, well, if it comes back again, we'll have another chance to ask some additional questions if we have them. I would presume we would, Mary. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is Steve. Not at this time. Thank you. Okay, Phil. No, I'm good for now. Okay, Liz. I just had a quick question, um, it, and it may be in the paper, and, and I didn't see it, but um, in terms of the size, I know it's not something that we would see, but the size of it, do you have a comparison of uh, like a local solar array that, that um, I could visualize, one that I might be familiar with in the area that it would compare to? Because I don't know what 500 panels look like. Sure, sure. Um, so other projects that we've built in the neighborhood, uh, there's a, a solar array behind the big picture theater in Waitsfield. Um, that's a community solar project owned by the, the members of the, 
the member owners of the project, um, which there are about 30 people who own that project collectively. Um, so that one's a good uh, good comparison. It's the same size project. Um, the the project we did for the town for the town of Warren and Warren School, uh, they they collectively own that project together um, up at the Warren uh, Recreation Field. That's another 150 kilowatt project, and then uh, a slightly pro smaller project that we built for the town of Waitsfield um, is at the uh, town garage uh, on Trombley Road in Waitsfield. Um, that's an 80 kilowatt solar array. So those are three projects that I that can give you kind of a sense of the the scale. It's one, roughly one acre. Okay. Did thanks. you say it's a town garage and? Waitfield? That's correct. But it's half the size. Uh, the one at the town garage is ha is a little bit larger than half the size. The 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 other two, the one behind the big picture theater and the one at the Warren School, those are all 150 kilowatt projects, so the exact same size. Great. Whoops. Uh, so, guys, I, I, we're going we're gonna to move ahead with our agenda tonight. I thank you very much for your, uh, for your information tonight, and we look, uh, we look forward to hearing uh, back from you after you uh, deal with the Planning Commission. Great. Thank, thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so next on our agenda is approving the uh, local emergency management plan. Uh, I looked that over. It looked fine to me, except you've got my phone number incorrect. Okay. <laughs> the primary, God, the primary number, over. my primary number is correct, which is the 802-371-8042. Uh -huh. But then you've got, then for some reason, you've got the fax machine at my old Noel Johnson insurance office on there as a second number, so that isn't going to work. Wait a minute. Oh, well, on the sign-in sheet, I don't. On the sign-in sheet, I have 2235915. Right. So, That's the fax machine at Noel Johnson. No, no. So, no, no, no. The, the fax, the alternate phone is 2235915. That's the town offices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. That's the town office. Okay, all right. So... So that's the backup phone number for me? Yes, I'm trying to make life a little easier for you, Peter. I don't make that <laughs> would, you like, would you like that the primary? Would you like me to I'm just that? teasing. I should, have, I should have recognized that number. I apologize. So <laughs> we're good. Did anybody, anybody else see anything that needs to be corrected or changed? No. no. Can, I just ask, can I just ask a question? Is, have, are Cindy, Eric, Nils, and Brad still, is that who it was? Are they still here? Are you guys, are you hanging out or are you, have you left the meeting? Jim, are left. you here? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get them out of here. Okay. By their silence. Yeah, we've got to get our, like we gotta get our, our procedures uh, cleaned mm -hmm. up here. But anyway. So, so with that, I would accept the motion to approve our 2020 local emergency management plan. I'll make that motion. This is Steve. Thank you, Steve. Mary is there a second? Mary okay, Mary. all those in favor of approving the local emergency management plan, uh, please say aye, and we should call the roll. You, you only have so to call the roll if somebody disagrees. If it's unanimous, you can just, you can just all say aye. All right. Well, is it, if it's unanimous, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So it's unanimous. There we go. Okay. That saves a little time. Thank you. So that still so that now goes through the regional planning commission and everything else to finally get approved, right, Sarah? Correct. Except um, maybe this is a good time to talk about signatures because we're going to need a no, lot of signatures. No, let's do that. Did we do that? Did we do that at the end? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand. I'll, I'll come and sign, but let's let's march our way down through the agenda. So, next is approving the FY21 annual financial plan for town highways. No, 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 no,
No, you, you skipped over something. You skipped over the request from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to where they would like formal permission to share the updated LEMP, which you just approved, with other members within the Washington County Municipal Officials upon request. I don't know why they need this. Sorry anyway, about that. Do you just, can you just uh, move that? I'll move it. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Phil, I'll second. Okay, thanks Phil. Um, all in favor of allowing the uh, Regional Planning Commission to share our emergency management plan with, uh, uh, who are they sharing it with? Municipal officials in Washington County. Yeah. Uh, aye. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, sorry about that. I'm looking at my iPad here, and of course it keeps keeps blanking out. Anyway, I'm being technically challenged tonight. Okay, now we are on to approving the FY21 Annual Financial Plan for Town Highways Action Likely. Any questions or concerned about that document, which was attached to the uh, agenda email? Is there a motion to approve? Or is there a motion, I should say? I'll make a motion to approve this, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? Yes, yeah, it's Phil. I'll second. Thank you, Phil. All in favor of approving the FY21 Annual Financial Plan for Town Highways, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved it. Um, right, the fun just goes on and on. Approving the Certificate of Compliance for Road and Bridge Standards. There's a good one. I'm sorry. I said, may I just say something? Certainly. So uh, there was something funky in the software, the fillable PDF from AOT, that it said, uh, if you get to paragraph second, it says, we further certify our adopted standards do. So you click that, and they do. And as the next paragraph is, we further certify that we do or do not have a, an up-to-date highway network. When I click the do, it also clicks do not. So in the copy you have, well, just ignore the fact that it says do and do not, because when in our records it says that we do have up to, an up-to-date net, network in, inventory. So if you're looking and you're confused by that, that's the deal there. Okay, thank you. I missed that. Shame uh, on me. I didn't see that either. Well, Good. It's not a particularly exciting document. No. Okay. <laughs> We're waiting for Steve. So is We're there, for is Steve there a motion to, move to approve approval. the certificate of compliance for road and bridge standards? Steve, where I'll make the motion? That motion? I just did. Speaking <laughs> yeah, <beat> to it. <laughs> and is there a second? Yeah. I'll second. Liz. Thank you, Liz. So it's been moved and seconded. All those of faith, uh, faith in favor of approving the certificate of compliance for road and bridge standards, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Okay. Aye. We've approved our certificate of compliance. And guess what? We're back ahead of schedule. These meetings do tend to go a little faster. Okay, treasurer's report. COVID-19 financial issues action possible. Dorinda. Okay, before we get into that, um, this is kind of goes along with a follow-up I was gonna ask anyways. I have from Noel Johnson, uh, Directors and Officers Liability Policy Renewal for Welch Park. What is the yep. status on Welch Park? Well, I the status is all done what? and at the last meeting, it was going to be checked on. All right. I I put a couple of phone calls out to our fearless leader with no response. I will I will badger him, but we need to we need to follow through and hire an accountant as the next step in our process. But I still haven't I still haven't heard from him that you know everything is completed with regard to our updated documents and all that. So. So we I haven't will, heard from John Riley. 
Well, we did hear we did hear from John Riley, but it's a question of whether everything has been uh, everything has been signed. I mean, I can ask I can ask John too, but the the issue of the accountant is not a John Riley issue. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I mean, like I will, all the documents uh, he, he said he had was preparing, he's actually done. Yes, I believe so. Okay, I didn't, I didn't and know I, that. We were waiting. We were waiting for one. This was like a month or six weeks ago. We were waiting for one. Fenderson signature, and I never, I don't think any of us received confirmation that 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 was ever received. Probably it was, but we just don't know that. Um, yeah, well, I, I but, haven't received anything since that meeting we had when he, John Riley was hired, so I'm no, really in the dark. <laughs> right. Well, we need to, I will, I will, uh, I will uh, badger him. I, I did notice that uh, Hardigan has completely moved out of that uh, building at Welch, Welch Park, which was a surprise to me. I didn't know that was going to happen. But anyway, yeah. that doesn't have anything was, to do with anything. Was he was he selling it or? I'm not aware sale. that he's selling it. I'm aware that he was trying to trying to rent it. I knew he had part of it for rent, but then all the porta potties and everything else left, and the Hardigan sign disappeared. So anyway, I, that that really doesn't have anything. Anything to do with anything? I just thought it was interesting that that uh, that, that occurred, and I wasn't aware it was going to happen. Maybe he's stuck but... down in Florida. No, I think no, he is he's mostly not in, in Florida. Florida. He's here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I will, I will, I will get after him. I couldn't agree more, Dorinda. We need to bring that to a conclusion, and if uh, if he is unwilling or unable. Uh, we should go ahead and and uh, hire somebody and and get the get all that stuff transferred over. So you're out of the out of the loop. Well, I'm really going to put my foot down by the end of this fiscal year. I mean, I just think it needs to get off the books. It's one thing we just don't need to track yeah. or be the bank for. So this bill no. is yeah. eleven hundred and sixty-eight dollars. Um, I went ahead and signed it as a treasurer, but after I did that, I realized I'm probably not the one because it's Welch Park, or does that make a right. difference? Well, it does. The answer is it does make a difference. And it's okay. probably, is it due like in the next couple of weeks? Uh, May 4th. Well, let me, well if, you, if you have yeah, a date, before then we, we'll get him Before we send out that check, let me let me follow up and get back to you, Dorinda. I mean, we need to, you know, first of all, what 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 we shouldn't be advancing the money. So, as a fallback position, we but I would rather. Call hey Peter, you're yeah. breaking up. I'm having trouble hearing. Yep, you're Peter, right. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, my problem is I'm I'm on my my phone is out, my internet is out, and I'm on my cell phone, hugging the hugging the window in my office to get the best possible <laughs> cell signal. Your home office okay. or your office office? Yes. Okay, and now so the, I'll, now hold, the I'll is, hold on to that. Yes. Yeah, so hold on to it, and I will. Uh, I'm writing myself a note right now, so I uh, so I get back to you. Okay. But I can also that's I also uh, have the power potentially to uh, defer payment of that possibly. Is it is it a direct bill or is it a bill from Noel Johnson? It's a bill from Noel Johnson that has to yeah. go back. To, well, the paperwork we have to send back has New England um, excess exchange on the yeah. letter. So we, so it's oh, yes, so it's both. an agency bill. It's what's called an agency bill policy, meaning we pay Noel and then Noel pays New England excess, and then New England ex sounds like a Ponzi scheme. New England excess pays Actually, the, uh, the insurance company. The New England anyway. the bill itself is on New England head um, header paper, but it's signed by Noel Johnson. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I don't think we put it into no, it's not in the orders for tonight. So all right, okay. I'll put it aside. Okay, well definitely definitely hold it. <clears throat> okay. Um so on to um I've been looking at 
the numbers and trying to follow them. You guys have the latest and greatest financials. Um, it looks like we may have to short-term borrow. I'm not sure. Um, I'm concerned about whether we will receive our fourth quarter taxes on time from a lot of people. Um, I know that's a little over a month out, but it's something to start thinking about now. Yeah. Um, Is that May 22nd they're due? May 20th. May 20th. 20th. May 20th. Um, yeah. So we have, we also still have not paid the school their final portion, which is somewhere between seven hundred and sixty and eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, we still have not paid the library their thirty thousand. So um, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that we may have to take a one year no if the taxes don't come in. But the, the, the interest rates must be really, really low. Um, what I was told, uh, I don't have that in front of me, but I still think it was like two, two something, three, somewhere in oh, wow. three. Well, my concern is, my concern is, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up tonight, Dorinda, because I've been thinking about this too and wondering about it is uh, having been spending a fair amount of time over the last week trying to deal with banks and sort sort my way through um, some of this some of these stimulus issues the banks are completely overwhelmed I mean they when you call the for instance when you call the local uh, People's United Bank in Montpelier you've got a call center which isn't even in this country so you know it is not it is not easy or simple potentially to deal with these banks. So I would, I would reach out sooner than late, later and say, you know, what do we need to do to be ready to do this and, and, uh, and see what kind of response done. to get. It's already done. I've already reached out to our person and that's what they came back with. Right. May I so, say so they're, so they're, they're ready to do it. So we don't need to, we don't need to do this, try and do this a month ahead of time or anything like that, or do it. Well, what we have to do is give them a number, and what they let you do on a short term note is like you normally borrow in in anticipation of taxes. Or, right. You know, so that is, we just need to kind of come up with a number, and then they'll come back. And um, I'll look through my emails because I talked to her okay. like two weeks ago, so I don't have the numbers on top of my head. Okay. Well, my other concern is, is God only knows when we're going to be able to set our tax rate and send out tax bills for next year. I mean, we may be, you know, we may look, be looking at uh, half a year of uh, two quarters of taxes, which are deferred. So we should be, and I mean, I, I don't know that that's the case, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just so guessing that it already, might be the case, but I think yeah, they're already thinking we won't have the numbers in time. Right. Right. And um, and who knows what? Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, we received a um, an email today from Ashley Hill, who works for. Uh, I don't know if you did you see that, Dorinda, by any chance? It came um, about. You can apply. Uh, municipalities are eligible to apply uh, for a public assistance form, and she suggests also taking uh, grants portal training. And this is just for COVID-19, and it's from FEMA. Um, and it seems to me a couple of things. That one is. Uh, for that, that might be worth exploring. If anybody, you know, I can try. I can try my best to try to understand it. Maybe Dorinda, you could help me too, just so that we can. If both of us do it, we might be able to find out. And I think it's to to deal with this kind of stuff. Okay. Is that? Could you tell? Is that? Is that free money or is it just a loan? Uh, it is. I will. I will forward this to all of you. Um, it is there's a link for from the state for for Vermont, like from Bema, 
and then uh, I guess it's going to come from FEMA, but it all it says is if you wish to apply for public assistance COVID-19 funding and are eligible as a town, state agency, or blah, 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 you can apply filling out here. And um, it, also, it also reminds me of the fact that we're supposed to be doing this buyout for uh, – uh, was Jennifer Evans down on, on Rich Road, and I honestly don't see how we can move forward with this at that time. If, you know, the town has to front a lot of money, and we have to, you know, all appraisals have come to a dead stop as a result, as a result. so I just wanted to just get that in the record, too. Yeah, I'm just presuming, I'm just presuming that that's going to be, that that's going to be pushed off. We have a bigger, so. yeah. But no, again, I, the thing to keep track of, I mean, I just I just want to be sure to the extent we can that if there's if there is truly free money out there, fine, we should go for that. But uh, we know just from our past experience that dealing with FEMA is never, never right. easy. And if there's some kind of expedited process, that's one thing. But if it's the usual FEMA, all I can think of is that hospital ship yeah. sitting in New York Harbor, which has only, as of yesterday, only had 30 patients in it because of all the bureaucratic crap about letting uh, letting patients on a on a Navy ship. You know, come on, guys. Jesus. Also, I just, I, I just want to say something that I, so far, and I realize it's only the beginning of April, but I have um, not received that many, I haven't re I've received one call about whether or not taxes would be delayed. Um, most banks have been escrowing, if you, I don't know what percentage of our taxpayers are, have their uh, taxes escrowed through their mortgages, but you know, a lot of that money has already been set aside. Um, so we should feel good about that. And uh, a lot of people in town are frugal enough, I guess, or to have already planned for this. I don't think it's going to be as big as a hit as you think, but any hit is a hit. Well, and and again, I'm concerned that, you know, it could be it could be mid fall by the time we can get our first installment on next year's. Time. So yeah. anyway, it will no. be. <laughs> I mean, no. it's usually September anyway, isn't it? Or do we do it the first one in August? The first bill is through August twentieth. Yeah, but you know, we could, we can't, you know, <laughs> we've got to set the tax rate. We've got to get the information from the state. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of hoops that have to be have to be jumped through, and I just have no uh, no confidence that that's all that that's all going to happen in a timely manner. So anyway, mm -hmm. Dorinda, your well, concern is a really good concern, and I'm glad you've already contacted the bank. And uh, you know, my my inclination is with all the uncertainty, if it comes down to uh, doing a bank loan, that we, you know, go for an extra three hundred thousand dollars or whatever. And if we don't have to draw it down, we don't have to draw it down. But uh, let's not let's not go through this process twice if we don't have to. Okay. And I don't know how willing, you know, I don't know how willing the in this in this day and age the banks are going to be willing to do that. I presume they will, but. Um, you know, we well, can't, we can't feel, tell what the hit on our cash flow is going to be. It's impossible to uh, predict. So, right. Well, I think the good thing we've got going for us is we have a pretty good relationship with that one bank. We've never defaulted yeah. on anything, and I think right. they're pretty comfortable with us. Well, Which bank is that, Dorinda? You know, they've got the full, the full faith and credit of uh, all the taxpayers in Middlesex are on the line, right? I think they're pretty safe. But anyway, which bank is this? Anyway, and ultimately we will ultimately we will collect. Uh, I mean, you know, we may have more more delinquent taxes than we usually have, but it's not like we're gonna not get any taxes. Okay. Also, well, while we're I... talking about Sorry. delinquent taxes, I'm no longer the delinquent tax collector, but I think we collectively made the decision not to send out late notices. But that is something that will have to be addressed, certainly after the May payment comes due, um, yeah. because there will be interest for two months. And if it doesn't come in on May 20th, there's the 8% penalty. So that's right. something else we need to look at. Well, there is... I mean, who knows what's going to happen? But there's certainly a lot of talk in the legislature about about uh, 
making it whether whether they just declare that taxes are deferred or whether they make it possible for us to defer taxes that is not clear to me but there's a lot of talk going on about that um you know the the first the first response i saw which was over a month ago was you know that we don't have the ability to change the date the due dates and do that now where that is and what's going to happen but it's it's coming up fast so they've got to they've got to figure out what they're going to do okay i just thought i'd throw it all out there while we're talking about it yeah um i think that, anything else dorinda no i think that's all i've got okay so, well, that's really uh, Sarah's question. We're not going to make a decision about whether or not we're going to delay collection of the taxes and or try to do something with the interest and penalties. Well, it's point. something you need to think about. I mean, right now, we we pretty much have just put it on hold um, and we haven't done anything. Right. So yes, definitely, we something we have to we have to think about and deal with. And, and again, uh, you know, the the last payment, people who pay that late, it's just interest. It isn't the eight percent. The next one is when the eight percent kicks in. So no, no, that has uh, real real consequences, major consequences. Right, Peter. Um, may I uh, just to go back to what Dorinda said? It seems like. Dorinda is asking for a number, and I feel like we should probably get that number in the minutes if she's going to continue to talk to the bank. Do you guys, are you ready to talk a number that she should ask for the bank? I don't think I'm ready yet, Sarah. Okay, no. all right. Give no, I'm not, I'm not ready. We've got a, we've got a I'm really not ready good. either. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's got any extra to money, to I could use it. I want to tell you we have a lot of big bills and see where we're at and be prepared because I don't even think if I borrow from, I'm concerned even borrowing from our fund account, whether we would be able to cover it, especially with the $800,000 due to the school. Right. Well, the question is, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think, wouldn't you think since the schools are closed, that there would be <laughs> some savings there? Well, they're no. still paying. I haven't heard the anybody teachers. talk about any savings. They're still paying the teachers, so you know oh, that's no. where the biggest part of it is. Oh no, I understand, but you know maybe the maybe the payments of the payment of the school portion will be deferred. That would that would help us big time. Uh, yeah. But, you know, uh, it's all gonna. I mean, the the, the problem is it's all gonna come due. So, you know. But it's again. I think the I think the short term issue of between now and the end of the fiscal year isn't so bad. I think as we roll as we roll along after July 1st, not knowing when we can send out tax bills and when we can get our first installment, that's that's when the chicken is really going to come home to roost, as they say, or the yeah. pigeon or whatever it is <laughs> comes from the roost. The canary. <laughs> I do have one last question, which maybe is irrelevant. Um, the emergency management people are looking to buy a printer, um, and it's like uh, four hundred dollars plus. Um, there is money in the emergency management fund, um, but I think at the last meeting you said you only thought they were buying pens and paper. Um, so we could buy it and put it in there, my, if that's okay, put it under their budget, I guess, would be my suggestion. And then what happens to this after this is all said and done? Does it go in a closet somewhere or? Well, that's what I would be concerned about. Let's make sure they buy a printer, which is gonna be useful to the, to wait, the town wait, wait, after this I, is all over. Whoop. I, I think that I don't think that this is necessary anymore. Uh, Paul uh, needed to print out something last night, Paul Attenti, and so I worked until, you know, 8 or whatever, 8.30, and then he came in after that and printed out some stuff, and I think that's the way we're working it out. So he has access to this office, and if he needs to print something, he can just print it from the printer when I'm not here 
normally I won't, won't be working until 8 something. So uh, I don't think he needs the printer anymore. Okay, because okay. he didn't get back to me on it. So. Right, and that's why. Well, that's, that's exactly what I want to be careful of. If it's something we really need to do and we have to do it, obviously we're going to do it. But I, what I don't want to buy is a $400 thing, which we're going to use for a month or six weeks, and then it's going to be sitting dead in the closet somewhere. That doesn't sound like a good use of our money. Right, right. Okay. Then I'm really question, done now. Question everything. I do. <laughs> I know you do. Thank you. Okay, Thank are you, you all set, Linda. Linda? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Okay, renewing Central Vermont Humane Society tray holding agreement. I looked that over. I did not. I, I of course, do not know what the what the current rates are. Do we know? Are those rates the same as the current rates, Sarah, or are they different? They're the, they're the same as the current rate. At the same time, we also got an invoice for their 2019 bills, which, you know, but anyway. Um, so uh, last year, 2019, which their, their fiscal year ends um, in December, we spent something like 250 bucks uh, to hold one dog, a couple of dogs. And uh, uh, the, knowing knowing one of the parties involved in this, we'll, we'll never recover it from them. But we can try to recover it from the other person. Um, they've since moved out. They, that party that really racked up the lion's share of that bill has since moved out of town. Is actually in prison. So, um, but otherwise, <laughs> the hey, at least he's getting at least he's getting three square meals a day. It's actually a she. It's a she. Oh, a she. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so, yes, but otherwise, yes, it's $50. That, that rate is the exact same rate as we had last year. Okay. So with that, I don't see any reason to, uh, to quibble about that. And we've never, over the years, it's never been more than a few hundred dollars that I can recall in right. my history. Uh, so is there a motion to approve that contract and authorize uh, Sarah to sign it on our behalf. This is Steve. I'll make that motion. And is there a second? I guess I'll Liz? second. Second. It. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Uh, all in favor of the motion to renew the Central Vermont Humane Society stray holding agreement contract, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. We've approved it. And Sarah, you can sign it. Woohoo! Power. Ah. <laughs> Move approval of the March seventeenth minute. Is there a second? I'll second that, second. Steve. Okay. All those in favor of approving the March seventeenth minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um. <laughs> orders. Uh, I can't review the orders because the internet is down, but I will review them before I, uh, before I sign them. And we're going to talk before the end of the meeting about how we're going to get all this stuff, uh, all this stuff signed. So that should meet the requirements, right, uh, Sarah? I'll just put in the minutes that their orders were reviewed ele electronically. And if you guys could just sign, either send to uh, Middlesex Treg or to me, something confirming that um, you have reviewed and approved, that would be very helpful because then I will attach that to the uh, warrant. Okay, so once, what we're, so what we're gonna do is, uh, similar to what we did last time, we're gonna, we're gonna sign and scan to you. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 okay. You don't so. have to scan to me, you just have to, you should, you should have, Dorinda sent you the orders whatever she sent you all that stuff today and if you could just email back and say i approve i approve that'd be great oh okay all right yeah it's even easier okay thank you yep perfect um correspondence well we have the uh, letter from the state regarding the um uh, moving the individuals into the uh temporary secure facility the kids yeah it, and the one they, is still, uh, as of this morning, is still on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't run away here. They ran away up in St. Albans, right? Yeah. 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 
so theoretically, they they moved they moved the four in there yesterday. After all, so Sarah and I participated in a conference call about this with uh, Sarah. What's her What's her last name? Squirrel. <laughs> Yes, oh, squirrel. squirrel. I do think I could remember squirrel. She doesn't look like a squirrel, but anyway, she's a squirrel. Well, it could have been chipmunk, um, too. I mean, it could be any so outdoor the, animal. <laughs> the, the irony of all this is, you know, they made this big deal about, you know, do we want to notify our residents? What do we want to do? Blah, blah, blah. Well, it was on the Channel 3 News. It was in the newspaper. So Right. The, mm -hmm. word, the word is out. So I guess... I guess uh, I mean, my initial thing was that maybe we should notify the town. When Sarah and I talked about it, I said, "Why?" We both agreed. Why? Why stir all that up? And maybe we should notify the neighbors. At this point in time, I don't even know whether it makes sense to notify the neighbors. What do you guys think? What do you mean, the neighbors? The people who live near it? The abutters. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. Well, we're all going to have to know. It is a. Uh, it is a change of use. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, my inclination with everything going on is just just to just to let it go. People don't people don't need yeah. to get stirred up about anything else. Yeah. It's certainly been made been made very uh, very public. Right. Yeah, I did let it go. Yeah. So, Peter, did you get the phone call from them after you saw it on the news? Before same time? Before. Before, mm. so they did. Re they they did reach out to us, um, and we all had the. I mean, you guys you guys didn't didn't see it, but I mean, we all had the, per the chance to participate in that conference call. But there was really no new. I mean, the news was just they were doing this, and you know they were telling us. But it's not like uh, not like we have the ability to stop them or prevent it. And you know, I don't know whether I don't know whether those kids are more dangerous than the people who are there. I have no way of evaluating that it is supposed to be only for the period of time that this COVID-19 thing is going on. Now, what happens then? Do they move the mental health patients back from up at central Vermont? I have no idea. And I don't think they have any idea. They are in the, are they up at central Vermont? I kind of thought they were from what I saw, I thought they were down in a special wing in Waterbury. Not so. No, they're at the, uh, they're at the psychiatric uh, hospital across the or down the street from CBH. But uh, right. just to clarify, uh, Sarah Squirrel did say that the the kids here were less of a after after years of saying that they can't talk about the nature of the patients there that at the temporary secure facility, they said they these kids are less of a concern. So who knows? Well, she can say whatever we ever she wants. These were the kids who are in Woodside. So these right. are the worst, most dangerous high school age kids that we have in Vermont. And I can also tell you from my past experience uh, with the Elm Hill School and group homes where we had a lot of those kids in the old days when we were running group homes, they were involved in sexual assault, abuse, I mean, everything you can imagine. So well, I, I have no I idea who those kids are who are there, but they are, they are the worst of the worst, essentially. Whatever that means. Some of them. That said, it's a lockdown. It's a lockdown facility. They're only going to have, uh, or at least she said they would only have a maximum of five there, and they have five full-time staff on duty there all the time. So, uh, and at least two people awake at all times. So, you know, initially we had concerns about the mental health patients. We really have had no uh, no issues. Uh, I don't know. I I, th I guess I think it's fine and it's it's well in public and if it's if it starts to be a problem then then we'll respond. But hopefully it won't be a problem. Yeah. We haven't had any concerns voiced by the people. Isn't it a isn't it O'Connor owns it now? Connor Construction and they rent it to yeah. tenants. Yeah. Well, they have the they have the land on one side, but there's a yeah. Anyway. But I mean, you know, they haven't contacted across the, Sarah. Across the street, there. I have had no, I have had no contact. No yeah. one has called yeah. to complain or anything. Yeah. So, what yes. I would say, Sarah, is if you hear from anybody, 
Yep. We now have that uh, letter that they sent out, which describes what they're doing. I would just give them that. Okay. You know, let's not well, let's not us make up anything. Let's let's hand out exactly what they gave us. You mean this press release? Yeah. Yes. Doesn't that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's use let's use their words, not our words. That's right. <laughs> They're more Put them on the hook. I mean, it was not. I mean, they did they did promise that they would keep us in the loop, and they did keep us in the loop. But boy, it was, you know, they're they're they were moving fast on this because once they realized those those kids went from being in a in a setting, Woodside is uh, basically a jail. It's, they call, they also called it the juvie jail in the old days. So these kids went from that to a house in St. Albans. Well, who would have thought they would all just sit there in this in this house? They two of the two of them took off right off the bat. So anyway, maybe they were the two from St. Albans. <laughs> yeah, knew their way around. <laughs> who knows? Um, do we have any other business? I wanted to um, thank both the business, of you. The and, business uh, that we do have, the business that we do have is you're going to need some signatures, uh, Sarah. Is it only me, or is there uh, something that everybody has to sign? The annual financial plan and the certificate of the highway thing that needs everybody's signatures. Uh, otherwise, okay. it's just you. Can we? Uh, so, which ones are they? The highway annual, annual financial, financial plan. And the okay. certificate of, of compliance or whatever. The certificate uh, so of compliance. It's and the 540 and the 545 items. Yeah, yes. that's correct. Those are the two. Otherwise, so, uh, all I need is uh, Peter's signature. Can't so we, uh, can we, we just sign and in our email? hand those back to you? Well, I mean, uh, you know, In other words, do you do, really need live signatures? What they call, what the SBA calls wet signatures? They're still in the day of fountain <laughs> pens, for Christ's sake. Uh, I think I, I, can't, we do the, can't we do the email that will say we approve the orders and then use the specific language of the 540 and 545 items? To say that well, we I think what we, have, what we have is we have the minutes. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, I'll call AOT and just sign uh, I'll, just, I'll call AOT and say, is it okay if I just, you know, approve by the select board, you know, and attach the minutes? That'll be fun. That'll probably suffice. I'm sure since every single town in Vermont is going through this, and these things all pop up this right. time of year, I'm sure we're all dealing with it. The only other thing you have to do is if you give me authorization, well, we have the LEMP, that needs a, that needs Peter's signature. And if Peter, if you're okay, going to well, I don't, mind, I don't mind coming down and you can, you know, Put stuff in the hallway, and I can sign, and I can also sign these other things. So at least they'll have one signature on them. I think Peter, what I'll do is I will email to you. I will actually put in a snail mail to you this, these documents with a return envelope. You sign them, and then just put them in the mail, mail back to me, and then that's okay. All. Just, okay, yeah. that's fine. That'll work. That works for me. Um, the other thing that I have is, um, and I'm I'm talking mostly to Liz and Sarah, but I am very anxious. Uh, to get this Zoom thing uh, set up so it really works, and I'm not sure whether the problem uh, yesterday was on was on my end or what it was, but I definitely could not get into the true. Uh, when I clicked on that link, it just sent me off to Never Neverland somehow. There's also Google well, Hangouts, which is easy. I mean, there's a, is that well, video? multiple ways you can do this. No, I understand Hangout? that, but I I think. I, I'm just speaking for myself. <clears throat> All the people I, I'm, I'm dealing with seem to be using Zoom. So to keep things simple, I would prefer to have it Zoom from my point of view. But yeah. if it's I don't better know to use why Google, everyone had problems, why everyone called in and no one used the computer. Well, let's let's do this. Why don't we, uh, Liz, Sarah, and Peter? Why don't we form a commission of commission yeah. committee of three? to get this worked out and see if we can get it to work consistently. And assuming we can, then uh, we'll, we'll try and do the Zoom. I mean, I've, I've, I've been able to, to Zoom in from home 
uh, every time, but I, for some reason I couldn't make it work. Uh, yeah, I, I have no problem with Zoom. I downloaded the app, and I just would click in, and it says join a meeting, and then you just put right. in the number. Right. I know. Um, I would. I, I think that probably just to keep everything kosher, the town should form a Zoom account, and you know, it should be on a Middlesex uh, credit card. We should have something so that we can go over 40 minutes, and maybe we can even get a business designation or something that – maybe it will improve our uh, connectivity if we can show that we're a business. Um, I don't know. That's a but good idea. Anyway, if we, it, it just, it, I, I feel, I don't think it's right, frankly, to stick this on Liz's uh, credit card bill or whoever no, bill I, this is. I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Do we have a credit card? <laughs> well, it's coming. Um, we did have one and it got compromised. <laughs> so we're waiting for the new one to come. Well, yeah, Sarah I mean, can just charge yeah. it and, and get reimbursed or something. Okay. Well, I'm willing to use, yeah, I mean, we can use my well, credit card. I can get the new card them. should be here. They told me it should be here in five to seven working days. So I'm thinking it's due in this week. I, okay. I would think it would well, probably fine. be this week. Because the problem yeah. is having done a bunch of these things once you get your credit card in there then you got to go in and change the credit card and it's a hassle right. and all that so if we can wait and get it set up right the first time i think that's the way uh that's the way to do it i can just say from my experience with zoom it's when it's when it's working it's just it's just slick and the the audio quality is really good and there's also and maybe you know this list but there's a way to have uh all the documents we're talking about in Zoom, so you can just click over and look at the documents, which is really slick. Yeah, well, so, I haven't used you can do that, that part. With all the, you can do it with yeah. all of those things. Um, you guys, the I did record this somewhere, like on the cloud. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to see after I'm done, like where it shows up. Um, and also, so, yeah. if, you should you should know that Orca has been has plugged into this meeting as well. So it's all being recorded on Orca as well. All right, so maybe I don't need to worry about it, but I am curious to see what happens to this, where this recording goes in terms of, it says it's recording to the cloud. Probably probably on Donald Trump's desk right now. You better look for a tweet. All right, are we ready to adjourn? <laughs> wait, wait, I believe wait, we are, I think, can, I, think I heard I the cocktail whistle blow. Wait, can I say one thing? <laughs> I want to thank Liz. I want to say I want to thank Liz for all the work she's doing to feed the homeless, and I want to thank Sarah for doing the tremendous job on making the masks for all the people at the hospital and wherever they need them. You guys have been working overtime. Oh, that's her name, you Mary. No, I I'm trying to raise fifteen thousand dollars. If anyone has it and wants to give it to me, I need to be. <laughs> I need to pay the uh, vendors who have been feeding the homeless. Uh, oh by wow. Next so if you know of anyone who wants to give 15000 we're getting the state to pay for it for the rest of it. But it's, believe me, getting the state to do anything, it's going to be hard. But right. anyway. Easier than dealing with Trump. Well, for yeah. The, state. the state's been good, I think, overall. Um, I think they've had good response to this whole outbreak. Um, I think they've done a anyway, good job. I, okay. think, I think Scott's done a good job. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. You're both doing a great job. I agree. I, th I think we can be. I think we can be proud of the of the state of Vermont. I think we can be proud of our little town, also. Me too. I did right. hear. I did hear that these guys up at uh, UVM who are uh, creating the, this ventilator design in their garages or wherever it is. Yeah. They're going to call it the Vermontilator. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty good. <laughs> the Vermontilator. Love it. So, uh, Peter, that, Peter, are you adjourning the meeting? Yes, I am adjourning the meeting. And I just I just want to say in, in closing again, thanks, everybody. This is this is not easy. Getting used to this is a uh, is a challenge. And uh you know, I do, I do, I, I feel good what we, what we did with that, uh, with that project. I don't know whether it's the right thing to do, but I'll be glad to hear what the, what the planning commission has to say. So, uh, everybody, everybody stay safe and, uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Maybe in a month or so, this will things will start to look a little better. Let's hope so. Okay. We may see Thank each other you. again. <laughs> okay. Bye, yeah, everybody. Got. Does everyone know how to hang up? Because we're going to end the meeting. Yeah. Bye. We're adjourning the meeting. Okay. I'm ending Thank the meeting. You, Good night, everyone. Hey, be well and be safe. Was, was Dick ever here? Was Dick